Hello everyone, welcome to Remote Classroom. This is Teacher Dell, and today I am going to tell you a story about Elias and his trees. Once upon a time, there was a family lived in a town named Terra Verde. It has verdant mountains, lush forests, pristine streams, towering trees, and crystal rivers. One day, the family decided to move away from such a beautiful country to Hawaii. However, the child of the family was still wind on a stories his parents told him about the town they left behind. Twenty years after, driven by curiosity of the heavenly place his parents told him, he journeyed back to this place. He did not expect that the town he was looking for would be too remote. He had to track mountains that no tourist had ever climbed. He was surprised by what he found. Tierra Verde was dull, barren and deserted. The streams had dried up, even the river, leaving behind a sandy, winding trail where the river bed had been. The mountains were bare, save for a few patches of wild grass. What happened to the enchanting land of his dreams? As he warily looked out into the horizon, he glimpsed a dark figure standing like a tree. He walked toward it and found an old shepherd and his dog surrounded by a herd of grazing goats. He offered him water, which came from a deep well near his house. It was getting dark, so he invited him to have dinner in his home. After they ate, he invited him to stay for the night, which he gladly accepted. He asked him questions about Tierra Verde. But the quiet old shepherd was evasive. Eventually, he told him the dark story of the town's destruction. A long drought came to Tierra Verde. Crops would not grow, forcing people to chop trees and burn down forests to clear more land for farming. Some of them sold fell trees as lumber while others collected burnt wood, which they sold as charcoal in nearby towns. After some time, the charred land became dry and barren. Hunger and poverty continued to torment the town folk, he said. One night, while the town slept, a fierce storm came. Because the mountainside was barren, Water raged down its slopes and flooded the town. The whole town was devastated and almost no one survived, he continued. He took out a small bag and emptied its contents on the table. Narrow seeds, he said. He carefully examined each seed and separated the healthy from the small and cracked. The next morning, the shepherd was not around. He looked out for him and saw him in his pasture near the valley. He gestured for me to follow him toward the mountain ridge. There, he began digging small, shallow holes on the ground using his staff. He then dropped the seeds in one by one and covered them with soil. He was planting narrow seeds. He later learned his name was Elias Tequila and that he was 50 years old. He lived alone by the mountainside with his goats and dog. Elias decided to plant trees because he said the mountain needed help and care. In the past three years, he had already planted 100,000 narrow seeds. Thousands of the seeds and saplings of Elias did not survive as they were eaten by rats or simply failed to cope with the forces of nature. The next day, they parted ways and he returned to Hawaii. 
Elias continued to plant trees as many as he could while the man, soldier by profession, had to face the World War II. For the first time, he witnessed the horrors and destruction wrought by war. Over the next five years, when the war ended, he needed a breath of fresh air. So he went back to Tierra Verde. The winding roads to Tierra Verde seemed unchanged. Not far from where he stood, he was surprised to see a thin mist crowning the mountain peak. It made him long to see his friend Elias and his narratories. He found him covered with black mesh with a few bees in his trail. Elias had a new profession. He now had just four goats and 100 beehives. He showed him around the forest. It was an impressive sight. The narrow trees were now taller than both of them and numbered by the thousands. The view took his breath away. He heard the sound of gurgling water. The river and streams had come alive once again. Everything was vastly different. The harsh wind that used to greet him was now a gentle and sweet breeze. There were also scores of new homes fronted by the gardens filled with brilliant flowers and luscious vegetables. A symphony of chirping birds and rippling streams filled his ears. Not far away, a cap of fruit burst and let loose its white, feathery seeds to the wind. A smile escaped his lips as a rain of white cottony cap of filled the air and giggling children round and trying to catch it in their hands. The prosperous, happy, and verdant surroundings were the fruits of his labor. More than 10,000 people owned their happiness to Elias. He realized that he too was indebted to Elias for the rebirth of Tierra Verde, the land of his roots. Although he never intended it, the trees that Elias planted had an important effect on the gradual transformation of the environment and the future of the younger generation. And that ends our story. Elias and histories. From the Elias stories, we can learn that don't let failure stop you from accomplishing your goal. And to learn more about our online classes on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, please complete the sign-up form to join our free storytelling class and receive a free copy of our digital book. Thank you so much and have a good day.